The decision of whether or not to buy a tablet PC or a laptop computer becomes increasingly difficult as tablets increase in high-endness with much better productivity and entertainment, whereas laptops still offer a bit better end of staying on task and being productive, but aren't as great for entertainment devices. At this day and age in 2014, we do have ways to take advantage of using both a tablet and a laptop in one single device. Hey there everyone, how are you doing? Joe Marring here for MobileCupOfJoe.com and I'm going to be reviewing a device like that today. It is both a laptop and a tablet. It is the Lenovo Mix 210. 10.1 inch tablet by day, put it in the docking station and it automatically becomes a 10 inch laptop. We're going to be taking a look at this thing I'm going to be giving you my full review. Start selling for $499. Pretty good specifications in this thing. So you know, let's not waste any more time and dive into my full review which starts right now on MCOJ. But before we go any further, please go ahead and grab that coffee cup, fill it up, bring it over, and sit on down. Take a swig for your mobile cup of Joe. Alrighty, and here we go with my full review for the Lenovo Mix 210. Big thank you uh, to my friends and pals over at Lenovo for sending us or sending me the Mix 2 to review for you guys today. And without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at this tablet. We're gonna start that off with the design and build quality. Uh, the Lenovo Mix 210 weighs uh, 1.27 pounds by itself. And you can see that it is uh, relatively trim too, you know, not the trimmest or the uh, lightest weight tablet out there. But for a 10 incher, it is certainly not too bad. If you look on the front, we have our 10.1 inch display, our two megapixel front facing camera, some Lenovo branding right there. We have a Windows Home button, but I did notice that in my time of using the device, it was much easier to use the Charms bar over here because that Home button did not really want to work unless you really apply some good pressure to it. And it's not backlit either. So, you know, if you're uh, in the living room late at night or in your bedroom and you're browsing this at late at night and you want to hit that Home button, it does not light up. So it's kind of difficult to see and you do have to apply a good bit of force to it to actually get it to do anything. So it is kind of an annoyance with that. If we go to the bottom, we have our uh, docking port right here for the docking station, which I'll get into a little bit later in the review. We go into the left-hand side, we do have our power slash lock button. We have micro USB along with mini HDMI and a 3.5 millimeter headset jack. And if we open up this flap right here, you will see that we do have expansion for a micro SD card slot. Now the Mix 210 is available in either uh, 64 or 128 gigabytes of internal storage, but you do have that 32 uh, micro SD card slot to expand it up to 2 gigs. Now I also saw a little speaker right here. We have JBL designed uh, speakers right here, one on the left hand side and one on the right as well. And we also have a volume rocker on the right hand side of the tablet with a, another port right here for charging the device. Now if we go up top, we do have a noise canceling microphone right there. And on the back we have a five megapixel rear facing camera, kind of a non position on the side like that where it is curved. And then we have some branding for Windows and Intel. I'm um, actually holding the device in the hand. It feels uh, decent. Uh, what I don't like so much is that these corners right here are kind of sharp. And when you're holding it in your hand like this, they do kind of dig into the palms of your hands, uh, which is not the most pleasant holding experience. And it got kind of annoying at times. And you can see kind of all around on this side right here, the bottom left and on the bottom right, very sharp corners. Now they're not so sharp on the top side, but they could be a bit better. Also this casing is not my favorite. Um, it is a bit sturdy or it ra feels rather sturdy actually, but it just didn't feel that great in the hand to me. It's very slippery on the back. Oh, we do have kind of curves right here, as you can see with the light reflecting on it, but it just isn't the most comfortable tablet to hold in the hand. It gets kind of thinner as you go to the top of it because you do have to have a thick, more thick, more thickness for that docking station, but just holding it, it is not the most comfortable tablet to hold for those uh, kind of thick edges right there. And with it being uh, 1.27 pounds, you know, not the lightest either. And you do have rather big bezels on the side, which have their pros and cons. Uh, they're going to have a con because you don't get well, you get the same screen real estate, but just that you have these big black bezels here, but they do provide a good place to rest your thumbs if you're playing a game or watching a video. 
Now we're talking about the design and build quality. Let's go ahead and talk about that docking station. This is included with your purchase of the Mix 210. It's not an optional accessory you have to buy. This is included. You have Lenovo's iconic keyboard, which I thought would work really well. Um, unfortunately, in my time with using the device, I felt that this had a lot of lag with it. I would plug it in, go on the uh, OnePlus One forms, which is a fantastic phone, really looking forward to it. But I went on the forms where I typed with this and I noticed I was lagging terribly. So I tried doing some other apps in Word and uh, some other applications, just normal web browsing, i.e. Uh, Internet Explorer, Google Chrome, Evernote, and it lagged terribly no, no matter what I did. Now if I typed kind of, you know, slowly like that, it was fine. But if I really got going on it, I would notice it would have a lot of trouble to keep up with me. The trackpad also is not the greatest um, either. It feels kind of slow and is not the most accurate. But you do have a couple different ways to dock this thing in. You have kind of your standard way. Back this up a bit with the laptop right here. So you can see if it wants to plug in correctly. And if it wants to turn on, that would be wonderful. You hear the sound go off and we now have our 10 inch laptop right here. You can see the home button is being finicky as well. We gotta go ahead and unlock it because we went to the camera right there. So here we can browse it with just this. We have a basic layout of a Windows 8 keyboard. I'll go ahead and go to Internet Explorer and I will type in the search bar. This is a test of the keyboard on the... So you can see right there Bring this a bit closer. Um, it's fairly accurate at times. You can see this is the test of the keyboard that kind of goofed up there. So if you are a very, very fast typer, you will have some trouble keeping up with this. I'm not going at my fastest right now just because it's kind of awkward to type and record a video at the same time. But if you're a very, very speedy typer, you will have some trouble on this keyboard. The actual keyboard feels pretty good. It's a bit small for my taste, but it does feel really great. Lenovo knows what they're doing when it comes to keyboards. Now you can also turn this thing around and dock it into it this way where it has a JBL subwoofer right here to play your audio. Now I found that while it did increase, make the audio sound a bit louder, it really wasn't that much of an overall improvement. Now I'm not a big audio nerd or anything. I love good sounding audio, but it's not my real thing. However, again, it made it louder, but I just really didn't notice that much difference in really, really high quality over the built-in speakers, which do get relatively loud. Again, this does give you a nice added volume to it, but I really just didn't feel it gave that much more quality and clarity to the overall sound experience. Now, there is a nice way to kind of tuck this into the package. This is all magnetic right here, so you can kind of put it in like this, and it will lock it in place, so you can kind of carry it around like a true laptop right here, which I do like that. So the docking station is kind of meh for me. A keyboard wasn't super impressed with and neither was I with the subwoofer on here. So it's nice that they do include it, but it just is not the best out there. You can certainly get much better docking stations for tablets out there if you do know where to look. Now with that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about some of the hardware in here. With that 10.1 inch display, a 1920 by 1200 full HD IPS display right here, and as expected, it does look very beautiful. Um, very, very crisp and bright colors, easy to read text. Everything looks really great on here. Go ahead and open up Netflix and show you a quick video in here so you can kind of get an idea for the overall picture quality and how a movie does run on here. And I will say that 10 inch display is really great for watching videos and playing games. I'll go ahead and open up Star Wars, The Clone Wars because oh, let's face it, that's a very, very cool show. And it's loading up right here. You can see it's kind of taking it a bit of time. We'll talk about the processors a little bit now. We have an Intel Atom 1.33 gigahertz quad core Z3740 CPU and backed up by two gigabytes of RAM, which is relatively fast. It's not the snappiest out there. As you can see, it kind of took a while to load up the Clone Wars. Uh, but let's go ahead and hop into, uh, we'll go to Rookies right here. That's a good episode. Turn up the volume touch and it's going it's buffered and let's go ahead and skip forward through the episode just a bit to get into a action scene hopefully still taking a bit of time to buffer that video 
And it's setting up our video player. It's going to take a moment. So go ahead, Netflix, and do your thing right there. 99% and 100%. There we go. Let's go ahead and skip forward a touch so you can really see how the image quality does look. So you can see that it looks really good. I'll, again, streaming media on this looks fantastic on that display. Now I was talking about the processor a bit earlier. You have a 1.33 gigahertz quad core Intel Atom chipset in here with two gigs of RAM. Now I found that while I was able to keep up with most of the ta tasks that I threw at it, I did notice some stumbles here and there with it. Uh, loading web pages takes a little longer than I would have liked to seen. We'll go home try to go home if that start button wants to work. From there we'll go ahead and hop into my weather app, scroll through that, go ahead and open up this weather map right here. Zoom in, taking some time to render all that. You can see it's kind of, there it goes, got that. Zooming out, a little laggy right there. Let's go ahead and hop out of that, jump into my calendar right here. Nothing going on today. Go over to my food and drink app by Bing, which is phenomenal, as I mentioned in previous reviews of Windows 8 devices. Let's load that up. Go ahead and fuel our plate with these health inspired recipes. Let's go ahead and make this thing because it looks mighty delicious. Don't know what it is though. I'll scroll through this is pretty fast, but say I want to multitask, open up my calendar, but instead of that, I want to open up weather. You can see it runs pretty good, but I did notice again, it's running good now. Oh, you notice some hiccups here and there. For the average user, it's going to be perfectly fine, but if you throw a bunch at this thing, you will notice a few hiccups here and there, just because it is an Intel Atom processor, not the fastest out there. Two gigs of RAM is kind of getting to the obsolete point of this day and age. So definitely not the slowest machine out there, but again, not the fastest either. Now, in regards to battery life, um, you get about eight hours of uh, video playback time, and I found that that uh, came out to be pretty true, pretty accurate. If I use this thing really, really hard, a lot of productivity, um, a lot of web browsing, a lot of emails doing and sending, a lot of application usage, a Netflix streaming and whatnot, I found that by the end of the day, I did have to throw it on the charger. Um, however, if you're using this thing off and on, um, you will be perfectly fine. This thing has phenomenal standby, standby time also. Uh, so really, battery life shouldn't be too much of a concern for you. I really didn't face too many issues with it. Pretty average, but it does work very well. Now let's talk about that software. This is Windows 8.132 bit. So this is a full-fledged version of the Windows operating system. This is not Windows RT, a watered down version of it. This is the real deal. This is basically a desktop computer crammed into a 10 inch tablet right here, or again, 10 inch laptop with that docking station right there. So I really, really do like Windows 8.1. It does have the update now, so we have our search button right there and all the added improvements that do come with Windows 8.1. And I really do like the operating system. I know a lot of people still have to get used to it, but I love having the desktop mode and the modern UI as well. Modern UI does feel better on the laptop mode like this than it does on the tablet laptop mode with the docking station just because it doesn't really make a lot of sense to be here and reach out and touch something where you can just go ahead and click it with your mouse if it's more of a personal thing. But I do really like the setup for Windows 8.1. Again, you have your charms bar right here, nothing new. Uh, search, share, start devices, settings. You can go ahead and go down to all of our applications by swiping up listed in alphabetical order. We can go by name, by date installed, most used by category. Also, you see here all of your basic applications right here. Um, runs very smooth. The main UI or user interface for Windows 8.1 is super, super smooth. Uh, you can see really no issue whatsoever. Um, another thing I like to touch on in a lot of my reviews for Windows 8 devices are the Bing included applications. Well, I really am not the biggest fan of Bing as a search engine, but I do really do love their applications for Windows 8 and Windows Phone 8 as well. Weather app, very clean. I love the detailed information here. I can go ahead and click on Sunday. And from here I have my hourly forecast and I can see uh, day and night, historical weather for the past year, what the historical average high was, um, average low, all recorded low, all those fun stuff. 
all that fun stuff rather. Go home, I can go to Bing News, which is another great application. A big featured story right here, I can swipe over and I can customize my sources right here and scroll through them there as well. And I can go ahead and hop out of that and jump into Bing Food and Drinks, which is easily my favorite cooking application because I cook a bunch and I really do like how this is laid out. One of my favorite features about this, they have kind of a uh, featured chefs thing. So for example, if I click on Markle Samuelson right here, it brings up his own kind of little profile page where I can scroll through, read more about him. Um, I can go to one of his restaurants and if I click here, I can actually do a 360 tour of the American Table Cafe and Bar uh, in Broadway, New York in USA. So you can see very cool stuff on here. And again, this isn't exclusive to the Mix 210. This is general for all Windows 8 devices, but I really do like it. They're, you can tell they're optimized for the Windows 8 user interface and they just work really, really well. Now for the final verdict and price. The Lenovo Mix 210 for 64 gigabytes of internal storage on your hard drive begins selling for 499 US dollars. Now if you want to up your storage to 128 gigabyte hard drive, you need to shell out an extra hundred dollars at 599. For that price, we're getting into some pretty high cost. Oh, uh, the Mix 2, while it's not a bad tablet by any means, I really don't know if you need to spend 500 or 600 dollars for this device. It's kind of meant to be your one and all in one solution for tablet needs and laptop needs. And while it could do that, um, I really did not enjoy the docking station as much as I thought I would. It's not the worst out there, but it just could use some improvement. Again, the keyboard is not my favorite. Notice some lag on it, and that subwoofer right there does not bring the enhancement to the audio that I would have liked to have seen. You also have the issue with the less than stellar design, um, average processing speeds. You do have a very beautiful display on here, but if you do some looking, you will be able to see a much better options. If you don't mind shelling out a bit more money, upgrade to maybe the Lenovo Yoga tablets or laptops in that series, or just look for some better kind of laptop and docking stations in the same kind of uh, form factor category. Mix 2, again, not a bad device. If you really like Lenovo, you don't need the best, but you really just need a kind of tablet and laptop thing right now. If you want to use it as a tablet primarily, and occasionally a tablet with that keyboard docking station, um, you know, check it out. Not saying you shouldn't, but I'm just saying you can do better out there because there are better products for equal or lesser money. And guys, with that said, that is my review for the Lenovo Mix 210. If you have any further questions, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. And if there's anything you would like to say about the device, if you have the device, or if you're curious about the device, any questions for it, again, let me know in the comments below. To stay in touch some more, follow Mobile Cup of Joe on Twitter, where the account is at Mobile Cup of Joe, and follow me personally as well, where I am at Joe Marin one Be sure to like this video if you did like it, and to make sure you never miss the next episode of MCOJ, go ahead and hit the subscribe button somewhere on your screen. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Bye-bye. Get in. 10-inch laptop by night. We're going to be taking a look at this thing. Start selling for $499. That went off, so that ruins the whole thing. Let's try that again. So right there, under my mouth area. And in 2014, it is currently possible. With tablet computers advancing much faster, a full laptop or a tablet PC, they got increasingly. D Are you freaking kidding me? Stop messaging me. Good lord. Okay.